this is a friend of ours. <laughs> Are you going to be preaching today? <laughs> Go and sin no more. Our men's conference uh, comes to a conclusion now. No. It continues this morning with our special guest, uh, Ro. Pastor Roe has been uh, pastoring for 26 years, Savannah Baptist Temple, and I uh, had a chance to meet him through Bobby years ago. Of course, they've supported Bobby for a number of years. Uh, Roe is also involved in international African missions, so he was part of our weekend board of directors meeting this past Friday, and uh, that was really profitable and fruitful, and, and he is a big part of that. And, and through uh, connectivity in the Holy Spirit and by his gospel, and by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are intertwined in his body. And for us to have this weekend has been very, very special. I'll remind you, ladies, there was an email that went out last evening. We are starting sign-ups to get ready for our women's conference, which is one month away, or four weekends away from this weekend. So please uh, get going on that and get signed up. Us guys, we've had quite a time. This morning, we're going to put it all together. And, of course... Uh, Pastor Roe is here to preach to us. Please give a warm welcome to Pastor Roe Porter. Come on, bring it in, bring it in here. You all right? You sure? Okay, amen. Hey, uh, listen, uh, we, we love your pastor. He is a special man. We pray for him quite often, but he is special. Amen. Hey, hey, listen, guys, we had a great time. Amen. And ladies, uh, God has worked on their life. Don't mess them up now, okay? <laughs> but hey, listen, if they mess up, it's on them, okay? We know you're in their life for a very reason to keep them straight for Jesus, okay? Listen, we're delighted to be here. I, I always love being at this church. Uh, we do love your pastor. Uh, a lot of special people we have met through the years here. And uh, your family. We feel like we, uh, we come home when we come back here. And uh, you're, you're easy to teach. You come, you want to hear the Word of God. And that excites me as a teacher and one who God has called to impart truth. So. Uh, we've had a great time this weekend, and uh, we look forward this morning of us uh, once again uh, digging into the truth and finding out what God has for us. But, but it's always neat to be here. I, uh, when, when people say, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the church with a long name. First Bible Baptist Church of Blue Springs, Missouri, and then I add the United States and the Milky Way Galaxy. So... Uh, I said, the church, with long, I said, it, it, there's an inside story. Every word has a purpose, okay? So uh, it's great to be here. Take your Bibles and turn with us to John 17. We want to kind of dive in to, a, uh, to listen to the Master pray. To hear Jesus talking to the Father hours before he would be crucified. And as you go through John 17, it's not our intention this morning to dissect the whole 17th chapter. We're just going to take a little bit out. But you, you see the mind of God. You hear the heart of the Son of God. And you begin to understand the purpose and the office of the Holy Spirit of God. And you see our unique calling as his disciples to carry on what Christ did at Calvary and what he commissioned us to do. So if you're there, let's go to verse number 12. John 17, verse number 12. It says, while I was with them in the world, he's talking about his disciples and he's praying to the Father here. He says, I kept them in thy name, 
those that thou gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost. But the son of perdition, he's referring to Judas, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And every time I, I read that, you have to understand that Christ knew he was going to the cross. Christ knew that the whole time that Judas would be the one who would betray him. And I always love John 13 where it says, And he loved them all until the end. He loved Peter even the fact that Peter would deny him. That, that those disciples would, would flee and run, and that there would be one setting there that would betray him. But he has surrendered himself to the will and the plan of God for God's glory, and praise God for our benefit. And then he says that the scripture might be fulfilled, verse 13, and now a and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have their joy fulfilled in them. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. I love that one. Because there's uh, 2,000 years of discipleship. And Christ was also praying for us when he was in that garden. Amen. Our text this morning reveals the answer uh, to the third answer that, that we have given this weekend. What are we talking about? And we ought to be talking about truth. Truth ought to be at the heart of what we are saying in our life as we interact both in the church, in the body, and then when we're outside the church in society. Friday, we answered the question with the answer that we are heavenly ambassadors commissioned by the high king of heaven to take the message to the world that a holy God became sin for unholy people, that we might be right with God. We have been commissioned and given what he refers to in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the word, the word of reconciliation. There's only one message. Jesus died for sinners. You can't save yourself. Only Jesus can do that. So to answer the question, we ought to be telling his story and telling our story how he changed our life. Then yesterday morning, we, we focused on speaking God's wisdom. And, and, and we kind of fine-tuned it to the church. That as we interact with one another, we ought to be guided by godly wisdom and value one another and realize that we're brothers and sisters in Christ and what we say to one another should be guided by the Spirit of God and we should give inspiration, hope, encouragement, life, and inspire one another to be what God would have them to be. That's what we've been called to say. 
Now, this morning, we want to focus and embrace the desire that the Son of God had and the Father had for us as disciples. He basically had a desire for us that we would be in the world, but not part of this world. That we would be sanctified in truth and go forth with the truth. That he wanted us to receive the truth and then practice the truth, become practitioners of the truth. But also proclaimers of the truth. That, that we would go forth and proclaim what we know about Christ. So we ought to practice it and then proclaim it. Now, with that said, let's, let's just dive in and let's look at some of the observations that we find here in John 17. It's neat that the word world is used 19 times. 19 times. And in those 19 times that it's used, we find the three different shades of meaning that are used in the Bible with that word world. When we talk about the creation, the world that's created, that word is used in this chapter. Uh, we also see the expression that we're talking about, the population or the people of the world, that's used. But the word that is used the most is the culture. The system of the world. That, that, that what the Father wanted, what the Son wanted, was that we would be in this world. And, and he declares, Christ declares that that world hated him. And that it would hate his disciples. Now, if I'm doing this thing, I said, listen, i got to take them out. Because I love them and the world doesn't love them. But he wanted to keep them in the world. Christ wanted his disciples to be in the world, but not a part of the world. It says in verse number 14, it says, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Then verse 15 says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Here's the thought. God's purpose is that his disciples be in this world as he was in. You know that Jesus Christ, when he came, he, he came into time and space, that which is eternal. Why? To perform the mission that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit had agreed upon. Now, let's look at some truths here, some facts that we want to look at. Christ wants his disciples protected while they're in the world. That's a wonderful thing when, when you consider the fact that, that he, he wants us, if we're going to be in the world, he says, I will keep them while they're in the world. And then, then he shares, Christ sends his disciples into the world. That, 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 that part of the plan of God is that we're in this world and he sends us forth into this world. Uh, that's a powerful thing when, when you begin to think. But, but then Christ, Christ says, okay, that's what I want. But I want to give them something as they go into the world. What does Christ give to his disciples? Well, he would give them hope while in the world through his word and his you know, uh, as we move through this world, we can have joy. We can have joy while we're in a strange land. We're in hostile territory 
We're his disciples. We're hated by the culture and the system of this world is totally against what we stand for and what we're about, but we can still have joy. It's, uh, I've always loved William Barclay's definition of Christian joy. He said it is that which cannot be touched by the circumstances of the world. It cannot, it, it cannot be measured by how much money you have or how much you do not have. It is not measured by your circumstances, your health. It's only measured by what Christ has placed inside of your soul. It cannot be touched by this world. So he said, you're going to be in this world, but you're going to have joy while in the world. We're in a strange land. We're in hostile territory, but we can have joy. He also says that he would sanctify them. That he would sanctify them, and he would do that truth. truth. And then he says, the word would sanctify them while they're in this world. So he's going to sanctify them through truth and through his authority, through his world, word while they're in this world. Wow. Verse number 17 says, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is I'm working on well over four decades of knowing Jesus. And I've heard a lot of definitions for being sanctified. Some of them are close. A lot of them are not even close. But I want to give you a definition this morning of what it means to be sanctified. He says the word, there, the word sim simply means to take and set it aside for a holy purpose. What Christ is saying, his truth, his word, his authority has taken his disciples and set them apart for a holy purpose. That, that same meaning, that, that same spiritual principle is seen in the Old Testament. And the Sabbath day will be sanctified and holy. That you will take that day and set it aside for a holy purpose. That the tabernacle will be sanctified. It is designated. It is set aside by God for a holy purpose. He did the same thing with, with every piece of furniture in the tabernacle. That, that, that everything that furnished the tabernacle would be set aside. He took the priest and the priesthood. He said, they will be holy, sanctified unto me. That they would be set aside for a holy purpose unto God for his honor and for his glory. Mm. The nation of Israel was chosen out of all the nations of the world. And God created that nation and says, I will take them and I will set them aside for a holy purpose. And that purpose would be to bring honor and glory and yes, praise God, redemption to the world. So when Jesus prays this prayer, he says, I want those disciples taken and set aside for a holy purpose. Wow. Every single one of you who know the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, that you have been redeemed, you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, you have responded to the calling of God. You have been sanctified. 
for a holy purpose. That's what it means. You know, uh, what often happens is that we don't fully understand how that comes about. Well, sanctifying is accomplished by the word of truth. There, 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 there's three things that happen here. Well, it is accomplished through salvation truth. We're sinners, we're alienated from God, we're, uh, we're a mess. Then the truth that God loves us. The truth that a holy God died to purchase unholy men and women. And when that truth touches our soul, touches our heart, through the power of that truth, we are changed from the inside out and brought alive spiritually. That's salvation truth. Then it is accomplished through the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth brings the salvation truth to us. It brings that truth and the Holy Spirit of God brings us alive spiritually. And we understand, I'm lost and I see hope now. I'm dead but I see he is alive and if I call out by faith to him, I can be made alive. So we confess that we're lost. We call out to him who is a giver of life. And the spirit of God resurrects the dead spirit and we come alive in Christ. Man, that's what the spirit of truth does. That is taking you and moving you to a special place. And then what happens? It is accomplished through the word of truth. The more we hear that story of redemption, the more we hear about God's dealings with us, the more we hear about his grace, the more we hear about his truth, we become cemented in this place that we have a holy purpose for God while in this world. The word of God is at work. The Holy Spirit of God is at work. We've been changed from the inside. Our hearts have been touched. So we're being moved to that sacred place. A holy God changes sinners for a holy purpose. To bring honor, to bring glory to him. We've been called. That's what he's done for us. He also that to us by giving himself as an example what Christ has given to his disciples he would sanctify himself through truth for their example it says right there and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified through truth if we can get a hold of this thought, this is ours from Calvary. This is ours from being scourged. This is ours from hearing crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. He says, I will allow myself and continue to be set aside for the holy purpose of redemption the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit agreed that this moment of redemption would fulfill the will of God, the holy purpose of Christ. And it will be an example to all his disciples that the Master did it. We should follow his example and embrace the holy purpose of God. He said, Lord, I will fulfill that. And other passages of scriptures, Lord, I pray that your will would be done. 
Mm. When you begin to to understand that, that that brings us to to what the application is for us this morning and what I want to say at the very heart of the application. Christ calls all his disciples of every generation to fulfill their sanctified mission. If you've been saved, you should be on mission for God. Absolutely no excuses. And it's for a holy purpose to bring honor and glory to him. Look at that text up there. As thou hast sent me into the world. And Christ is, is at the end of performing his mission. Even so, have I sent them into the world. Wow. You and I are here for a mission. That word sent is the word that we get apostle from. That we've been given authority. That we've been given special authority and special power to go forth on the mission. John 20, 21 says, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so sent I you. I've always loved Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, Go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, everyone. Everyone needs to hear this. It's always about going. It's all about being. The Great Commission, which is found in Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you even until the end of the world. Isn't that powerful? That you are here and I am here in this world for a holy purpose. We shared this the other night with the guy in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. And he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And what? Now we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead on his behalf for him, doing it for him, saying to the world, be reconciled to God. We have taken what Christ did. Father, Christ did the mission of redemption. We are doing the mission of evangelism. Taking it, Father. Man. To do it in his stead, it simply means do it for him. Amen. I've always loved 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Make God, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Why? And be ready. Be prepared always to give an answer to every man that will ask you the reason of the hope, that joy, that hope that is in you and do it with reverence and with meekness. Mm. We have been called. We have been set aside. Well, let me bring you to an application point here. I'd like to do that every now and then just to stop, but let's slow down for a minute. God has called us to say something. We've got something to say, amen. God has sanctified us by truth and has set us apart for a holy purpose. Amen. God has called us to be on mission for him in this world. And God has given us a heavenly message, truth, that we might 
leadership. Our mission is accomplished in hostile territory. There's nothing that, that we get from this world, the system in this world, that can help us accomplish that mission. Now, I'm not talking about methods and stuff. I'm talking about spiritual power. It's not done in our pride. It's not done in our, it is done through the Spirit of God Almighty. That's what we have. I love uh, when we understand our resources are spiritual and not carnal. That brings me to the application. What is the application? How do we speak the truth to our generation and fulfill our sanctified mission? How are you going to do it on your job, in your neighborhood, in your family, as you go in and out of life? Hundreds of encounters every single week. How do we speak that truth? The encounters that we have in church, that we have been set aside for that holy mission, holy purpose for his honor and for his glory. There's three things I want to give you. <laughs> oh, that was introduction, man. Here's the sermon. Okay. Number one, we surrender to the spirit of truth. I've always loved this portion of scripture. I love that word unction. But you have an unction, an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, that no lie is of the truth. I like what it says over in 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, it says, Now w we have been established in Christ and has anointed us and has sealed us, has given to us the earnest of the Spirit of God. What he's saying here is that we, we must surrender ourselves to that which will give us knowledge of the truth. We, 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 we talked about earlier how the spirit of truth comes in and begins to change our life. We need to stop and begin to listen to the promptings of God in our life. I referenced uh, a man the other night, Herb Mackey. That's one of the things Herb told me to do. He said, Pastor, you need to start to listen to God. And when the Spirit of God tells you to say something, say it. Learning to listen to what the Spirit wants you to say and who he wants you to encounter. I've, I, I've tried to practice in my life for years now. When God brings someone to my heart and to my mind, I try to reach out and contact them right away. Because I've, I've been sanctified for that. May, may God, God wants me to reach out for a purpose. So I need to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit, surrender to what God wants to tell me and how he wants to lead me. He's that comfort that's been called alone, alongside of us to help us, to prompt us, to lead us. We need to surrender. Holy Spirit, what are you saying? Learn to have discernment. Learn to get that discernment in your life that will illuminate you and lead you in every encounter to say truth that is needed to be said. Surrender to the spirit of truth. Number two, we need to study. Study the word of truth. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Wow. See, we study the truth that the Spirit of God can pick that truth and use that truth in our life as we interact with people. It's amazing sometimes in my life how I, I'm dealing with a situation, I go, whoa. Then God, the Holy Spirit, will give that verse to me. See, see, see I, I, yes, I have experience, but I don't have all the experience to help people with all the problems. But I have the word of truth 
Your job is to know the truth. This church is filled with opportunities. Uh, y'all uh, ha have the deeper study stuff y'all do for the really smart people. I think uh, Bobby teaches them and other people teaches them. Brian teaches them. I mean, the, the guys that, that want to be the special ops for truth in the church. Man, you're signing for everything. I heard, heard last, uh, last year y'all were beaming in George Grace to teach. Everyone ought to be signed up for that class. Amen. I, I mean, anywhere you can hear truth. Why? Because God will, will bring you to an opportunity that he wants to remind you of that truth that you can give that truth to somebody else. It may be in a coffee shop one day. It may be to your kid's mom. God will remind you of, of that eternal truth that they need to hear. It may be a brother or sister in Christ, that, uh, in Christ that are going through a difficult time, and God will bring you that truth, that verse, that eternal principle that you can share with them. We need to be students of the Word of God that need not be ashamed. Be ashamed. What, what the thought of being ashamed is not being prepared for the moment in time that we're to be able to take the Word of God. We're right to divide means to cut it straight, to tell everyone the exact truth of what it means. Amen. I mean, we, we, we have allowed ourselves to be convinced, well, you, you got to be special to do that. You, you, uh, no. All of us have been called, set aside for the holy purpose of truth. Study the truth. And then, number three, all God's children said, amen, that means we're close. To speak the word of truth and love. To be able to communicate not only with our words, but with our life. To speak truth with love. I think only eternity will tell us of the people that have been pushed away because we didn't speak the truth in love. There's always that great balance of grace and truth. That God has forgiveness for our sins. You have sinned, but there's forgiveness. You, you have been disobedient. God has chased you because he loves you. He has something better for you. To be able to speak the truth like that. Ephesians 5, 2 says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and has given himself to us as an offering and a sweet sacrifice and a sweet-smelling savor unto God. Man, I've always, always embraced 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. This is Paul writing to that church in Thessalonica. And you think of Paul as this great intellectual giant and and, and man, just, just pumping out truth, pumping out the letters of the New Testament, and we don't understand he was a man of compassion. Look how he talks about how he went to Thessalonica and how he ministered. But we were gentle among you. Even as a nurse cherished her children, as a mother cherished her children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. Wow. This world, we, we need the truth of God. And we need to deliver it with love and compassion. We have the answer. Jesus is the answer. We're not called to beat up people. We're not called to judge anyone. Let truth do that. But speak that truth with compassion and love. 
pleading for the souls of men and women and trying to interact and help our brothers and sisters in Christ stay on mission for God. Amen. Well, that brings us to the final thought, the application. We've been sanctified by Christ to perform a holy mission. Amen. Every single one of you. Well, I, I, every one of you. I've always loved the story of the first church. Acts chapter 2 kind of illustrates it. Man, they didn't have a building. They didn't have any church officers. They didn't have any elders. They, they didn't have a church constitution. They had nothing but Christ and one another. And Luke tells us what they were doing. They continued teaching the apostles' doctrine. What apostles' doctrine was whose doctrine? Christ. They, they were teaching the apostles' doctrine. They, uh, they had fellowship one with another. They had prayers. They were breaking bread. They were going to house to house, worshiping God and speaking the truth. And God added to the church daily such as should be saved. The church being sent, that church grew from 120 to over 3,000 and then over 5,000. Some estimate, I don't know who these estimators are, but, but the church in Jerusalem might have gotten as many as 50 or 60,000 before persecution came and they were sent farther outward. Wow. They were there to infiltrate every life, every home, to infiltrate the truth, putting the truth here and putting the truth there, saturating their city with truth, saturating lives with truth. And the method were the disciples. You are the method that God has chosen. You are the method. He can do it with rocks if he wants to, but he's chosen you. He bought you with his shed blood. You've been chosen. We've been chosen to infiltrate this world with the love of God. To saturate our neighborhoods, our, our offices, our factories, our homes with the truth of Christ's love and redemption. Hmm. Wow. You know, uh, I often think that sometimes we don't fully understand what God has really done for us. I've been, like I said, working on this thing for about four decades now, but when I was a teenager, Christ took me and put me here, pulled me out of the world, and set me aside. You know, that's what the church is called, an ecclesia, a called-out assembly, collectively, you have all come together on mission with God, and this church has a mission here in this community and in this world. Let me close with this story I heard one time. I was in a uh, Fellowship of Christian Athletes banquet with Bobby Bowden, and uh, the coach, uh, man, he's so good. He's in heaven now. But he was sharing his heart for young men. A lot of the young men that came to Florida State, Florida State was one phenomenal football program. I, I know y'all know about football here, but, but that's college football, uh, the real stuff, I guess. But Co Coach Bowden was there and said, you know, him and his wife prayed for every young man that was on that team. And they tried to adopt them because a lot of those young men were from homes where there was no male influence. And he said, I would promise those moms and those grandmothers, I would do my best to make their grandson or son into a man. And, and, 
and he said, you know, through, through the years, I, I would have people tell me, said, Coach, you're, you're biting off more than can, you can chew there, Coach. That, that's right. And the coach closed that talk out with this illustration. Now, I heard it almost 20 years ago, and it impacted my life. He told the story about how a writer every summer would, would go to the beach and rent a house. And how his morning practice was to get up as the sun rose and to walk on the beach. He said one particular morning he got up and as he looked out on the beach, there were starfish everywhere. And as he walked down the beach, in the distance, in the far distance, he could see a silhouette. He could not make out what it was, but the silhouette would, would go down to the beach, then would go to the water, come back, come a little farther, bend down, go back out the water. And he watched it for a while, and they were moving toward one another, and then he recognized that it was, it was a boy. And, and he was picking up a starfish, and he was taking it and putting it back in the water. And the man yelled out at the boy and said, hey, son, what are you doing? He says, I, I'm, I'm helping these starfish. I'm trying to get them back in the water. He says, son, there's too many of them. You're wasting your time. And he had one in his hand and said, well, not to this one. I'm not. <laughs> and he placed it in the water. And the coach made the, you see the application. Look, people, this world's in a mess. You have been rescued from yourself by Jesus Christ. You've been indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God, and you've been given the Word of God, your own mission in this world, to basically help people one life at a time, one encounter in a coffee shop at a time, one conversation at a time. Slow down at work and listen and speak the truth and love to those that you encounter one person at a time. God has you here for a holy purpose. You're on mission for him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your your truth. Lord, I, 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 it's so hard to get my mind around the fact that you saw me and already you were praying that I would be set aside and that you would use me. God, I, I yield to the spirit of truth this morning to teach me. God, make me a better student. And Lord, help me speak your truth with, with love and humility and meekness. Because, Lord, you do all the work. It's not us, Lord, it's you. Lord, I pray this morning, your church, your people, that you have bought with your shed blood. And you have given all they need to be on mission for you, would embrace the mission and realize there's people, there's family members, there's co-workers, there are brothers and sisters in Christ that need to hear them speak your truth and love. We ask this in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen.